Resident Evil Village is a brisk yet extremely diverse experience. Like skateboarding through an art gallery, or getting two bites into a hot dog before the waiter swaps it for a creme brulee and a salad and so on and so forth. Several reviews that I have seen have acknowledged it, saying that the game moves at the pace of a Flume Slide, and such compare it to a Flume Slide, but it's more than just one ride. RE8 is a whole goddamn theme park. Resident Evil 8 takes place four years after Resident Evil 7, and our MC Ethan is just chilling in Europe with his wife Mia, and they got a new little baby Rose, which makes Ethan Winters the only Resident Evil main character to have canonically fucked. You know, I heard someone saying that Mia sounds different. Ma se continui a fare il musone tutta la sera? Ma non credo di essere d'accordo. Anyways, Chris busts in, shoots me uh, precisely 17 times. Him and his squad nab the bebe and they all hit the road. The truck Ethan is in crashes because this is a video game. And so Ethan limps through the snow, eventually stumbling upon a mysterious... Hamlet, and as we encounter a local, it becomes clear that shit's up. Oh no! They're coming. Either way, he did. And we encounter our first enemy. This fellow is kind enough to treat Ethan's earlier cut in the ways of European medicine. These guys are actually quite different from the standard RE. They don't just kind of stumble and shuffle around, they stay still and they dodge bullets. Their slowness and precision pays off in their favor though, with this one grab attack that's really hard to block. Particularly if you yourself are being too aggressive. You could even try to parry the attack and push them back, and maybe it's just me, but people seem to hardly use the parry, despite how beneficial it is. As you make your way through town, you encounter enemies that eventually form a big ol' mob, slowly getting more and more intense in a very cool way. They hop off roofs, archers start attacking, even Santa Claus shows up. You're supposed not to lose this fight, but to survive for long enough for the scripted event. Though on hard and above, this is an insane difficulty spike that can really gatekeep new players. As you run around trying to survive, you'll find two mechanics exclusive to the Berg area. Popping flower bags for cover, and barring doors. Barring doors can be kind of useful in very specific scenarios, but I don't think I once used the flower bags. In concept, sure, they are useful to stagger enemies, otherwise quite hard to stagger, but there must be only five or six of them in the entire game, and only in the parish area. At some point you'll be thrown, yes, literally thrown across town, even if there's a house block in your flight path. After going, you know, grrr, rawr, uh, they fuck off, and you meet an old lady who says something spooky. We are now in the northern part of the... Dorp. I'll talk about it later when it properly opens up. So, to proceed, you'll need two crests. The first of which you can find in a church, surrounded by images that look very spooky. For the other, we must first go through a cornfield. There's a bunch of guys rustling around the corn, and it's kind of scary. And well executed in that, they really try and evade you. But overall, it's just too small to really capture the feel of a scary cornfield. So anyway, you get to a little house and you meet a bunch of people and they're trying to get to the big house, but the gate is locked, so you parkour into that place. And so it is that we meet a motley crew of rapscallions, each with a skill to their name, a tale to tell, and they're all dead. Wait, maybe? Maybe? No, no. You trek to the castle, seeing an eerie figure along the way, and are about to make it inside. Well, well. Didn't think anyone was left. 
<laughs> and now at last, we meet the whole gang. We got Quasimodo, Nick Cage, Don, and Big Lady. The chase sequence that follows is really just a set piece with no real nuance to it. But once it's over, you escape. 